and over a period of time it was drying phase. There is a restraint volume change which happens during the concrete at its green phase and when it sets over the 24 hour time slowly, this initial setting time and the final setting time, there is a lot of volume change which happens, which are one of the reasons for the concrete to crack in its plastic state. And then when the cracking is not controlled, then there is a delamination and then you have the chloride ingress as well as the atmospheric reaction in concrete which causes further deterioration in the material and which ends at the phase 3, the phase 3 stage where they are stalling delamination and disintegration of the concrete which eventually leads to the failure of the structure. Degradation issues, we have uh, the delamination, what happens? Most of the concrete, when uh, they delaminate, you have the exposed rod which has to be treated. We have to use retrofit engineering, and this is a very expensive process. We have beam column joint junction, where at most of the time you have the failure which occurs at the beam and column joint junction. The concrete is poured into very difficult sections where there is a lot of steel, and the detailing of steel is in such a way that the concrete doesn't penetrate into those sections and which form honeycomb concrete, which results in uh, the poor ductility at those sections. Deterioration, common deterioration issues, continue with that with the surface separation of floors, the roads and one important thing was this, this is one of the important slides where I took it from uh, Professor Neni Bambi, was my friend. This is a Laval Park in uh, Vancouver, Canada. This and we know Canada produces one of the best quality concrete. Very highly controlled concrete, very rich concrete of very high grade, and we can call it as they called it a sustainable concrete. What happened is, what happened was that this concrete failed all of a sudden. There were three cars which were passing through it, and this did not even show difference. In fact, it was an irony that only a week before this accident, Professor Nenni, along with the government of Canada, went for the inspection. So they inspected it and said it was fit for the road traffic. And just after a week, this collapsed without any distress signal. So we are dealing with concrete which can be a potential time bomb. That is, during the phase of its initial states when we pour the concrete, concrete could create itself a time bomb and over a period of time cause the time bomb to explode. We do not know when, but because of various external sources. Micro cracks inherently formed in concrete. I don't think we have the capability of producing a non-cracked concrete yet in the world. We have cracks which are due to water evaporation, heat of hydration, which changes the water spin ratio. We have improper construction techniques, more prevalent in, in India. We still are not able to have an SOP for uh, the placing of concrete, compaction and the curing of concrete. We seldom see concrete being cured. And we at the same time are looking at very high performance concrete of M70, M80 and above with smart materials. We have all the smart materials available today. We have the best quality engineers available to produce concrete. We have the best ready mix companies which produce good quality concrete. But who is there to place the concrete to the perfection of the engineer? We still are dependent on masons and labor who do the work of placing the concrete and who has ever bothered about curing of concrete? We ensure that the next day it is cured but after there is no follow-up. And those days the quality of concrete were in such a way that they lasted for a long time. But today we are looking at retrofit of concrete structures within the first 5 to 10 years of it. Crack with progress with measurability. You can see this, I borrowed it from Lee. And uh, this is uh, the engineered cement composite against the concrete pad on top. You can see the development of cracks over a period of time. And uh, with which you can see a plain concrete versus the fiber reinforced concrete, you can see the number of cracks as well as the, the depth and the width of the crack. So it clearly shows that when there is a normal concrete, it tends to crack, and those cracks over a period of time propagate in its width and in its depth, and it's not controlled and it cannot be controlled. Where by using smart materials like fibers in concrete, we are able to ensure that the cracks will still are a part of the process of manufacturing concrete stays as, as is where is. It doesn't develop into deeper sections as well as wider. So you are able to control it and you can see the 50 micron crack stabilizing after two and a half years. 
we have seen that the crack is stabilized with the fiber reinforced concrete in place. ACI American Concrete Institute gives code for crack width. It says 400 new microns for ex external applications and 300, 330 new microns for interior and exterior applications. But we are looking at something between 50 to 100 new microns for any crack width to be designed. Today, US is coming with a code. ACI is, is formulating a code for which 50 to 100 new microns should be the crack width should be taken for design. And uh, with the, the new committee being formed in the month of February, we would be very keen to note the application of fibers in concrete, especially for the designers. How can fibers help? Fibers are a three-dimensional material. They are in, they are present everywhere in concrete. It's not that you see it in the middle of the section or in the top surface of the section. It spread throughout the concrete matrix. It gives uh, three-dimensional reinforcement. That's why we call it as a secondary reinforcement, complementing steel in concrete. And it provides homogeneity to the concrete matrix. Because we saw yesterday when concrete was being poured with and without fibers, we could see definitely how fibers played a very important role in giving the concrete more cohesivity as well as homogeneity. Plain concrete, when we vibrate the concrete, we generally notice that due to law of buoyancy, the water and the slurry comes out to the surface, and we most probably see some kind of feeding on top of the concrete surface, especially with respect to normal concrete. When, when fibers are used, these Three-dimensional fibers hold on to the concrete matrix in such a way that they do not allow the aggregates to settle down due to gravity or allow the water to come up to the top due to buoyancy. Requirements of fiber, proper, proper aspect ratio, because there are so many types of fibers and materials which are available in the world, in, in India especially, there are a lot of imported fibers also. But how we need to choose fibers, because 10 years back we didn't know what was, what, what was the uh, two applications for fiber reinforced concrete. Today we have graduated to a level that we are using fiber reinforced concrete. We are proud to say all, all the fiber manufacturers will agree that fibers are being used on a daily basis in concrete. But what are the types of fibers with which another issue has come that there are different types of fibers, how do we choose the fiber? We have to choose fibers based on its aspect ratio, shape of a fiber which plays a very, very important role in the bonding of the aggregates and uh, filling up the micro, in between the micro and the nano states of concrete, fibers have to play a very important role. And uniform dispersion, which is very important for the concrete to be more homogeneous in itself. Recron 3S provides firm mechanical bonding. It doesn't slip in the concrete matrix, we have a triangular, substantially triangular cross-section fiber, which is a solid fiber which is available with us. We have a patent and we are manufacturing. Apart from being associated with different institutions for creation of a fiber for construction use, we also have a world-class laboratory set up in our plant which tests fiber and concrete relatively every day basis. In fact, I have been involved with creation of new types of fibers over the last two years. And uh, we have had large scale applications in asbestos. Last two years, we have been successfully able to replace 10% of asbestos fiber with the help of our uh, Recron 3S triangular fiber. Dispersion of fibers being very, very important. FRC fiber reinforced concrete stabilizers at 50 micron, as I said earlier, versus 250 microns in uh, an ordinary concrete. Water permeability is very important when you have more cracks in concrete, the permeability is definitely going to be more. When the permeability is going to be more, you will have a lot of problems with respect to corrosion of rebar for a period of time. Then you would definitely certainly have issues of carbonation in any case, and which will also cause the decrease in durability of uh, your concrete, with resulting in which you will have problems of your structure, and you will have to spend a lot of money in retrofit. With higher fiber volume, crack spacing is smaller. Tested by the IIT Madras initially. We started off with the IIT Madras. Then recently, we have been in the last one year associated with Civil Aid Bangalore with various testing with M25, M40, then M60 grade of concrete, different replacement levels, different fiber levels. In fact, we have gone ahead by not only looking at pressure strength of concrete, we have gone ahead and looking at average residual strength of concrete. We are looking at something which is very, very important for us for the next two years or next three years from now. And we are associated with Civil Aid for doing so many research works with. Uh, uh, with respect to average residual strength gain with different volumes of fibers and different types of fibers, with different lengths of fibers. This is what we are intending to look at. We have just completed work with the University of British Columbia, UBC Canada with uh, Professor Nemi. And we have had uh, some reports which I will share with you now. A reduction in shrink gain cracks 60 to 90 percent and uh, 
Three days back we did a trial at the Atlantic Ready Mix plant with and without fibers and we could see there was almost 100% replacement. We didn't have and it was a very extreme condition where at 1.30 p.m. we cast the slabs with and without and uh, we did not cure it. We exposed it to uh, steam or uh, a blower. We made sure that all kinds of uh, things could cause uh, cracks in concrete and uh, we saw a lot of cracks in concrete without fibers and there was nothing in uh, a concrete slab which was capped with fibers. Flexural toughness which is a very important thing. When you don't have much of crack in concrete, you are certain to have a much more durable concrete with respect to lower permeability. Abrasion resistance increase and impact resistance. These are some of the test results which I would like to share because these will show in light the advanced requirements of fiber in more concrete in the next five years. India is not looking at the increase in flexural strength or increase in the compressive strength or increase in abrasion resistance. We are looking at flexural toughness and a post peak ductility issues which could make sure that we can produce thinner sections of concrete slab and we can save a uh, lot of concrete by virtue of that. We have 18 mm fiber and then uh, 12 mm and a 6 mm. We compared all of those with uh, concrete and uh, on 1399 ASTM for average residual strength of concrete and uh, the values, you can see the average values at the bottom for plain concrete is 0.13 versus 1.57 for a 0.75% of 18 mm fiber in concrete. So that translates to the increase in the residual strength of concrete when you have more number of fibers or more quantity of fibers in concrete. This is again a, a 1399 test on average residual strength, flexural toughness, an increase of uh, with the uh, Plain concrete, you can see 0.3% dosage, 0.5% dosage, and 0.75% dosage. And ultimately, you can achieve around 79% increase in the pressure and toughness as compared to a plain concrete member, which is 10%. Durability of concrete is dependent on various factors like permeability, diffusion, corrosion control, toughness, crack width, and bond strength. And uh, with polyester fibers, only 0.08% dosage at 900 grams and 0.16% we could see a, a substantial reduction in the shrinkage behavior of concrete. I have all those test reports in positive time, I am not going through it because these are all very technical and the previous presenters were all making very good presentations on decorative things. These are all not very decorative but I still will be able to give you a lot of documents and details with respect to all these reports which I am showing to you now. Diffusion coefficients, chloride diffusion, then uh, effective chloride content, water soluble chloride, Corrosion control test, we have seen that there is a, a significant improvement with respect to that. In fact, uh, you would be very interested to see a 15 kN loading at 0.2%. You can see uh, the uh, onset of corrosion, the number of days. The number of days with which at no loading, 33 days it takes for the corrosion and the reinforcement steel versus 10 days when we load the concrete to 15 kN. Rebar bond test, as I said earlier, concrete. Uh, reinforced concrete has concrete and steel element, both of them do not bond with each other at all. They do not like each other at all. We are looking at an interface between these two, which are definitely the only solution for them is the incorporation of fibers for the bonding of the steel with the concrete. As for alkaline stability, because most of the people were concerned that polyester fibers are not very stable in alkaline medium because we are looking at a pH of close to 13 or 13.5 at its initial state, that is plastic state. But we have done uh, a beam, we cast a beam and we studied the toughness of the beam after 200 days because we see that the pH, the temperature of concrete at its fresh state will be slightly higher which will definitely come down over the period of time and the pH also would be very very strong at the time of placement or at the fresh state of concrete. There will be no reduction in the toughness of concrete as such. Repair, it is a very good repair material. We uh, have been associated with post rock for uh, production of end rock. A product uh, for uh, repair. It's one of the ingredients is uh, uh, recron three is polypropylene microfiber. These are the slant shear tests which have been conducted with all three types of fiber at different dosages. And uh, probably many people say that uh, the compressive strength is not what is matter most. But we generally at most of the sites we have facilities to cap cubes. We don't cap still we have not come to the level of capping beams and cylinders at the uh, project site. There are very few instances where we cast beam. Probably that could be a very large size, but for an ordinary size, 
may be consuming 100 cubic meter or 200 cubic meter. We don't have a facility to gas beams transported to the plant and then cure it and test it for flexural strength. We then certainly look at compressive strength and what we have seen with the help of triangular cross-section fibers, we have been able to notice a considerable improvement in the compressive strength also. This is, this is one thing which I want to place on record. ARS value increment 2 to 10 times, flexural strength 40 to 90 percent, split enzyme strength which is more crucial, shrinkage reduction of 40 to 80 percent depending on the grades of concrete and its exposure levels and toughness, post crack integrity, which is more crucial for us when we do thin sections of concrete members. Guidelines for selection, application. What do we need as a parameter for fiber selection, objective of the application? If you have a member which you need to provide higher flexural toughness or post peak ductility, we need to have a longer length of fiber and probably a thicker fiber for achieving the application. So we have those uh, materials which are very well available and uh, should not be too fine to ball. A good quality fiber should not ball inside the concrete matrix. It should not cause lumps inside the concrete matrix, which are very, very crucial for the concrete to behave better. Should have higher tensile modulus because we are looking at fibers with higher tensile modulus. And I am talking about polymeric fiber. I am not uh, taking any mention about uh, non-polymeric material, which definitely has very high tensile strength on its own. Moderate elongation and good modulus of elasticity. These are the types of fibers. And uh, we have the facility to manufacture all these fibers and currently we are at polyester and polypropylene fibers. These are the fibers which are available with us, macro. As I said earlier, substantially triangular fiber with a fiber intrinsic energy ratio of 2.2. Reinforced cement concrete, the application, I will go quickly on to that because I have to show a video now. And the precast application, water retaining structures, slab on grade, CC pavement. We are currently involved with Ultratech in uh, producing uh, fiber reinforced concrete for the NICE project. We have started the work of NICE project. We are supplying fibers for the concrete. And uh, these are some of them. <coughs> Short treat and plaster application. Microfibers, the length is between 6 and 18 mm. Structural synthetic fibers, the length is between 20 and 48 mm. And uh, we have an excellent scope for shrinkage crack control because still we produce concrete with crack. We have an excellent uh, uh, Facility to provide shrinkage crack control with the help of fibers, improve flexural toughness rather than look at uh, compressive strength and flexural strength, we look at flexural toughness and areas that can replace crack resistant steel because it's a very old concept of providing IRC 65 steel member at 8 mm steel at uh, 150 or 250 center to center, which uh, no longer works in concrete today because of its difficulty in application and other repair solutions. Application experience, we have got a lot of experience, 12 years of experience, a lot of, lot of projects we have and this is growing on a daily basis. IR 4.6, SP 76 and IRC 50 and on 9th of uh, January I was at the IRC 73rd uh, annual session I made a presentation and on that day on the 98th convention CC, the general council made it been approved that fiber will be used in concrete for payments and it will become a standard now. By May it will be published. The standard is going to be published. CPWD and DS are approval. Railway Unified Board, the worldwide recognition for as a code for fiber reinforced concrete. It says, as engineers, we are looking at durable concrete, aesthetically appealing and decorative. But are we looking at durability? We need to look at durability first before we get into the aesthetic application of concrete. Let me run the video now. This was uh, shot yesterday afternoon. Okay. What we are doing here is uh, Coated concrete, the Reliance Industry sample of concrete is being poured here. The first sample that is going on here is the concrete without fibers. And uh, later on, we are going to add fibers into that, and that will be poured across here. And uh, for the students there, I would like to put in a small bit of advice. Whenever we are doing concrete on grid or on the earth naturally, we will always have an impermeable membrane like this, which is plastic or any other material that is going to be impermeable. Thank you. Fibers. Uh, 
these are triangular in shape and told by the Reliance Industries that it is the only fiber which is available in triangular shape and about 900 grams of this, 125 million milligrams of this is put into one cubic meter of concrete. This will be dispersed directly into the PM. This will be dispersed directly into the PM and you can see, watch how it is dispersed.